Hey guys, this is Mario, aka HDTV Man at SX64 Man on uh, Twitter. You can see my profile up there, right there. And recently, uh, I added a new mod to my SX64 that's created a little bit of interest. And folks have been asking me about, you know, how did I do it? You know, what did I use, etc. So I thought I would basically tear apart the SX64. And, uh, and show you guys, you know, all the mods that are in there. Just a little bit of history on this machine. I originally purchased it in June of 1984, so I'm the original owner. It's been all over the world on flights. It's been to Europe, running off a 220 transformer, came back to the U.S. It's moved through several states in the U.S., and fortunately, it's still kicking never really have had any sort of component failure on it whatsoever. But recently, uh, I've started to add uh, a few more things to it. Uh, my original mods was to put in a switch to defeat the internal speaker to get rid of that annoying buzz that we all love on the SX64, and also to put in a, uh, a, a mini jack, you know, for headphones, that kind of thing. That's been in for a while. But recently, I've done some other mods. I did a lot of stuff suggested by Ray Carlson, uh, including um, the Ultra Reset type of stuff, uh, also uh, uh, the cartridge port fix. Uh, as, as you guys may know, there is an actual wrong trace on the, on the cartridge port that needs to be cut, and also on the user port. So those are kind of all known little idiosyncrasies with the SX64. So I've done all those, and I also added the mixed stereo SID option to the SX64, which was a lot of fun. And having to do that, I also did some other things, such as modifying the chassis inside to allow for a better airflow and things like that and uh, and now it also has a fan on the top cover um, so there, there's quite a few things that I've added to it um, one of the most recent things is I saw Adrian Black's excellent video on um, how to improve a regular C64 video uh, by making some modifications to the modulator and I found the equivalent circuitry on the SX64, and basically it involves bypassing an inductor, uh, L2, on the SX64. So, you know, I, I posted that also on Twitter and on Facebook and, uh, and, and the SX64 uh, group. And as you guys may be able to see, that that's what the SX64 screen looks like in... Uh, it's actually even a little cleaner uh, not going through the capture card in, in real life. So that's something I'm real happy about That because uh, that was always a pet peeve of mine is those colored uh, sort of bars on the very uh, sides of the SX64 screen. So here's a close-up shot of the storage bin on the SX64, um, which I was always trying to find a use for, and, and now I got it crammed full of stuff. Um, so on the right side, you can see the uh, mini jack, and right next to it, the dip switch. That's actually uh, for the mixid and uh, to control various uh, configurations on the mixid, such as selecting uh, which is the primary SID. On this machine, I have uh, 6581 running on the left channel and 8580 on the right. So, but with the dip switches, you can actually switch the priority and location of which it goes where. And that uh, kind of works better for some of the newer demos that are specifically made for the 8580, uh, as opposed to the older 6581. The, uh, basically, the toggle switches I'll be replacing soon with a, something a little bit more attractive that'll go uh, nice and blue, that'll match the uh, color of the SX64. But that's uh, basically just a mono stereo switch uh, for the mixid. Um, it's the speaker on off control for the internal speaker and on the right is a new switch to control turning on or off the the mod that you see on the left so on the bottom you see um, 
two LED strips there. Got that on Amazon. It was about ten bucks, um, and uh, for the left and right channel. And on top of that is the Magic Eye tube, uh, which is really really cool. These were old tubes that were used um, on on ancient radios to do things like uh, control fine tuning, so let you know when you know you were tuned in correctly to the station. Uh, they were also used as uh, VU meters, uh, that type of thing. Usually, if it was stereo, you'd have two. And what I did for that is I, I purchased an external uh, socket for the tube and basically wired uh, from the socket on the board to the tube itself. Um, I'm still trying to locate a male connector for that socket and uh, having a little trouble with that. It's easy to find the sockets themselves for these tubes, but the actual uh, male pin connector, I had to cobble something together from uh, header pins and that kind of stuff. So it's not very pretty, but it works. So this is part of a clip that uh, I put up on uh, Twitter. Um, and this is just, uh, it's not internally recording the audio, so it's just basically picking it up off a uh, couple computer speakers that I have. So nothing fancy, but uh, you'll see the LEDs and the uh, Magic Eye tube in action. All right, and uh, these are, uh, this is a tune by Owen Crowley, uh, one of my favorite composers uh, for the 64. He, he writes some really, really nice stuff. Uh, you should check it out. Uh, this one's called Hooker. And uh, yeah, really nice stuff. So this is where we're going to go ahead and crack open the case of the SX-64. So for the pure collectors out there, look away now. Um, anyhow, one of the first mods you'll see is uh, I noticed the area of the MPU board where the 6510 is and the SID is and the PLA, etc. And especially with now with the mix SID, that would get pretty warm. So what I did is I just put in this uh, regular uh, Cooler Master computer fan, uh, a bearing, ball bearing fan, and that runs out of cable to the back there, as you can see, and uh, just connect a external 12 power, uh, 12 volt power supply. Uh, didn't really want to tax the uh, SX64 power supply anymore with all these external mods, but having those 12 volts came in handy because now. Uh, I could actually use those 12 volts for all the other mods that I put in. Okay, so with the hood off now, um, first thing you'll see is the um, storage bin has become convertible. So, this piece here, <laughs> we can toss aside. Uh, I needed to do that in order to fit all the components uh, for the tube, 
uh, as well for the LEDs and for the dip switches, uh, for the mix SID, etc. But um, the first thing you'll notice is there's a lot of braided cable around here and just uh, some shielded cable where normally uh, you don't see that on an SX-64. Uh, that's my attempt. All this braided cable underneath it is copper shielding, uh, copper foil. And uh, so that's my attempt to minimize kind of uh, the interference RFI and any sort of buzzes, hums um, that uh, could feed down either to the video or to the audio uh, lines. I still have to do the internal. Uh, it's very tight in there and uh, I've been waiting next time I take this apart to be able to do the internal connector as well. Uh, so that's what all this shielded wiring is, it, you know, both the power wires and the uh, signal wires for the audio are all shielded. Uh, so I'm going to start here in the, in the back left of the machine. And the first thing you'll notice is this tiny board right here. Uh, and that's the SX Ultra Reset right here. So you can see the, the red cable goes to the uh, user port reset line. And then there's a few more cables coming under here and being fed to, to different places in the boards. Uh, those cables are to uh, switch ROM. This has a Jiffy DOS, so you can switch between that and the normal CBM. And the beauty of this Ultra Reset is it just uses the regular reset on the front panel over here that was previously just used for the 1541 drive. So with this, you can reset the whole computer, you can reset uh, the drive, you can change ROM. Um, so it's actually kind of really, really handy to have. Oh, and also you can uh, change the device number for the internal 1541 under here. And that's really handy because I now have that set to 9 because I primarily will use the, uh, from the, the SDIC that you see here. Um, and, you know, with the SD card, that's very, very handy and quick. Uh, so, and that's set to drive 8 by default. Okay, Other, another thing you might notice is I'm kind of a label fanatic. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll see labels everywhere, you know, right, left, mix in, chips are labeled, and there's uh, heat sinks ev everywhere. So I've tried to future-proof this. Uh, I even have heat sinks here on the I.O. board, and basically anywhere I could fit them, <laughs> I've uh, put in heat sinks. And on the uh, one little modification is on the VIC chip, on the VIC-2 chip down here, I had to remove the original SX-64 heatsink, which is actually quite nice, because I have Sven Peterson's LumaFix 64 in there, which actually really helps the video quite a bit. So that's something I highly recommend. Um, and be but because that you know that little board brings the VIC up a little bit uh, higher, it I had to put a traditional. Um, heat sink on it of this ilk and it just just barely fits underneath the uh, the drive support for the 1541 and you, you might actually even say that the drive support for the 1541 the metal part becomes an extended heat sink because it actually touches the heat sink but it works quite well uh, you just have to be careful when you take stuff apart um, other other things you might see there is one thing you cannot see which is my latest mod and I'll bring the camera around later on to show you that but uh, on this board, on the uh, MPU board, there is an inductor, L2 inductor. And I might have mentioned before in the video that I watched Adrian Black's great video uh, on how to improve uh, video on, on the C64. So this L2 inductor is actually uh, shorted back here. There's just a little, uh, uh, a little cable you know, bypassing the L2 inductor. And that's made a tremendous difference in the video of the SX-64. I don't actually know if PAL-64s uh, have this issue, SX-64s have this issue or not, but this bypasses the, the 22 uh, mH uh, uh, millihenry uh, inductor. Okay. Uh, SID chips, you can see right here, here's from the mid-SID. So the mixed SID board is in this area right here, and this is the area that got quite warm and that's why the fan sits right on top of here in the case uh so you have the 8580 right there and then you have the 6581 underneath it's 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 actually quite quite tight um 
you know, with all the connectors and cables and stuff. Uh, there are some stereo SID, uh, newer stereo SID implementations that are actually a little bit smaller. And so you can consider that on your SX as well. Um, so that, you know, th this happens to be, you know, a fairly substantial board, but it works quite well. Uh, let's see what else we have here. So I just wanted to give you a closer shot here. So this is the L2 inductor I was talking about before right here. That's uh, shorted. But you'll also see for the mix SID back here, there's the uh, A5 and A8 lines and the IO1 and IO2. One of the things about the SX64 is adding the stereo mod is actually super easy because, you know, you have the, the back side of the board here, of the MPU board, and those address lines are just right there. And I actually much prefer to do this in a permanent way, like this, rather than use the grabbers. I have pretty bad luck with grabbers shorting out adjacent pins and uh, blew up a couple of pins that way. So <laughs> I'm not a big fan of grabbers. I know they're, they're quite easy and, you know, to remove and stuff, but with a little care, it's very easy to just uh, solder in the four lines here, and I think it works quite well. Okay, so moving in closer to the latest mod, and I'm actually going to move the camera a little bit and see if you can see this. It is quite tight quarters for the tube mod, as you can see. So over here, we really we have the extra socket that I put in, okay? And with the connections of the socket back in here, it, it's actually pretty tight, but you know, if you isolate everything well, there should be no issue with grounding in terms of voltages and that kind of a thing. Um, so here's a little little closer to the uh, to the guts there in the storage compartment now. Uh, so we have uh, so this is the basically the Dupont wire tube cable. I'm not going to show you my very very ugly male connector over here because this is what I'm trying to find is a male connector for this tube, and I had to cobble together something out of uh, pins uh, and. Uh, out of header pins in a more or less a semi-circular fashion. I'll just say that. <laughs> Not quite circular. So that's pretty ugly and I don't want to mess with that. Uh, on the other hand, there's uh, there's a couple things in here. This is uh, the reduction of the 12 volt power supply uh, that's coming from the outside at external supply to 6 volts. And that's both for the LEDs and actually for this board as well, for the um, uh, Magic Eye tube board. Um, uh, the Magic Eye 2 board has its own audio connection in here. So you'll see this very complicated harness here basically just uh, connects all the audio lines together. Um, that, uh, and, and it's the audio output that's coming out of the mix SID right here to the to the three and a quarter inch jack as well. Uh, the, these two ribbon cables here are, are, are for the mix SID and go all the way underneath connecting to the mix SID over here and this is for the dip switch configuration uh, and then everything else is just the uh, you know there's a the, the, the speaker defeat switch up here that's the cable for that and you know nothing really fancy one of the things you cannot see unfortunately and uh, uh, w when I take this apart maybe I can get a better shot of it for you is I have modified the chassis of the S64. The, uh, the SX64 has a big metal shield down here that supports the uh, 1541 down here. The problem with that shield is it basically sandwiches the MPU board and all the heat of the MPU board uh, stays in there in that lower part. So I carefully bent that uh, metal back and forth a few times, quite a few times. And, and and really broke it off uh, from the bottom. So now it's flat on the bottom. This All this area here is open. The downside is you lose the back support for the 1541, but I use the, uh, actually it's part of a big pen, the outside uh, plastic part of a big pen, and which is you know kind of a, a cylindrical type of a thing, cut it down to size, and made just a new plastic support for the 1541. Uh, to the bottom of the case and then coming up to here to the top of the case. I mean that actually is quite sturdy and works pretty well. So there really is only one column there and everything else is quite open although you know you can't really tell right now. 
So I'm going to try to give you guys a little bit better shot of the insides as promised. Uh, so I'm going to very carefully just uh, undo a couple of the cables and, um, and see if we can get in there and look at the guts. So basically the way this comes out is kind of tricky, but we should be able to, to get it out and, and show you what's actually in here. And so if I carefully, I'm just gonna bring this guy over, all the way over to here so you guys can see this a little bit better. And pull all this connecting, connecting stuff out of here. I think you'll get an idea of what we have. Okay, good. Uh, this is the Magic Eye board that I'm playing with right now. So that basically fits in there. Uh, now you notice I haven't attached anything permanently and that's because I'm still working on logistics, trying to find a connector for this to make it low profile. And I probably will put, cut another access hole here or there and put this back. Um, to, just to make it a little neater installation. But, uh, you know, for the time being, you know, you, by the way, there's a closer shot. Yeah, there we go. Of the dip switch uh, plate and stuff that's in the front. Uh, actually, I have a friend. One of our friends on the forums is going to make me a 3D plate for this because this was just kind of cobbled together quickly. And that's another reason this is still sort of more or less apart. Um, so you can see here that it is quite a bit more open down in here where the drive is. Now, you know, I'm not going to take the drive off, but it literally is all the way open in there. And let me see if I can zoom in. And here, here we go. Let's get in there. Removing the access plate in the chassis that comes up vertically um, to the MPU board does have the advantage of making things so much more accessible back there. Uh, one of the other things is, uh, as you can see here, it gives you a pretty good look of the Mixed stereo board right there. And uh, you can see really how cramped uh, things are going all the way down. Uh, I've also put some heat sinks down there, as you can see. But the advantage too here is that with this design is that the 1541, the way uh, Commodore made it, is actually quite accessible if you need to clean the heads, uh, lubricate the rails. Uh, or even take the 1541 out in order to align it. So it comes out with four screws and it's actually pretty easy uh, you know, to take in and out. So in closing, um, don't want to make this video too long and then if you guys have any more specific questions, maybe I can zoom in on, on future things uh, regarding any of the stuff that's in here. Uh, I was just gonna say, if you are working in here, this is the forbidden zone. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what I call it. Uh, yeah, this can get you killed. So I, I stay away from the zone. I very carefully just went back here and uh, rewired the speaker connections, you know, with the shielded cable. But that's all I've done there. Now, I am a big fan of CRTs, but if this CRT ever goes, uh, you know, I definitely will put in the new LCD mod in there, which is, you know, quite, quite nice. And we'll keep these guys going. At that time, I'll replace this, you know, with a nice pair of stereo speakers. And, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll have stereo audio from inside the case itself, which would be even better. Um, so that, that, that'll be the next mod, but I will not do that until this guy actually dies. And he's been quite good so far. Uh, and the last thing is I will put all the links to everything I talked about underneath. Um, kind of excuse the amateur video. I don't do this, you know, uh, very often and uh, kind of working with limited resources. But I hope this uh, at least gave you an idea of this uh, SX64 with all the goodies. Um, any other questions, yeah, feel free to either put it in the comments or, or, or find me on Twitter, you know, uh, HDTVman at SX64man. Uh, I'm also in the SX64 Enthusiasts group. Uh, yeah, my name is Mario, and uh, you can find me there. And I'll post links to the, uh, to the posts in there. There are you know, relevant to this machine. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for watching and let me know. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Um, and the technical aspects will get better. <laughs> okay.